Thanks very much for taking some time to listen to uh, a vaccine update. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Mike Dacey, and I'm the uh, Chief Operating Officer of Riverside. And over the next few minutes, I just wanted to describe to you the current status of our uh, vaccine efforts uh, so far. Um, the first thing I wanted to uh, talk about was how much vaccine Riverside has received and how much we've given out. And as this slide shows, Riverside has received um, and these numbers are as of the 23rd of January. We've received uh, 17,200 doses total. Uh, most of those are the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, and we've uh, given out or scheduled for this upcoming week 15,850. So that's almost, that's well over 93% of the total doses that we have received. We have either given out or will give out over the course of the next week. Now we have some second doses that we're beginning to give as this slide shows about, uh, we've already given uh, over 3,000 second doses. Um, and we think this is a, um, a really great accomplishment because there are a lot of health systems across the country and a lot of states across the country that have only given out 40 or 50% of the doses. We've given out virtually at the end of this week, 100% of the doses that we've received. And that's our goal to make certain that not a single dose of vaccine remains in any refrigerator or freezer an hour longer than it has to. The second slide I wanted to show is the distribution of who got the vaccine so far from Riverside's efforts. Uh, and if you look at this, uh, all, over 30% of the vaccine that we've given out has been given out to people who aren't employed by the health system. That includes municipal workers, especially uh, paramedics, uh, medical workers who work for uh, various private practices and uh, different private groups, medical groups across the region. Uh, and that's uh, approximately 30% of the doses have been given out to people who are not employed by the health system. And again, we think that's very, very uh, uh, good for the community and very important uh, for, for the overall effort. Um, when we look now at moving from vaccinating healthcare workers, uh, the, the sort of the 1A group of people, to vaccinating patients, we're now moving from hospital-based clinics to medical group-based clinics. And through some great work that's been done through the, um, the leadership and the staff and the medical group clinics, we've been able to expand our total capacity for giving vaccines um, to approximately 10,000 doses per week. That means we can give or could give 10,000 doses per week uh, in our various medical clinic sites across the health system. That doesn't mean we'll be able to do that because we are going to be limited by supply. But if supply were not an issue, we have figured out the staffing, the locations, the patient flow, everything required to give uh, approximately 10,000 doses uh, per week. Um, now, the supply that we're currently receiving uh, falls far short of that, and I think there's a lot of hope that that number will go up and we, we will receive more vaccine, particularly given the great performance of the health system in terms of administering the vaccine that, we, that we've, uh, we, we, we've received so far. Um, the other question that comes up is who in patient groups will be the first priority to get the vaccine? And we're now working on what the government and the CDC is called the 1B group of people. And those fall into two broad categories. One is by age, uh, people over age 65, and the other is essential workers involved in frontline jobs, for example, police officers and other people that are involved in, in public safety. Uh, and so we are working with the cities and towns and municipal leaders in order to give them um, and their, their staff access, access to what vaccines we have available. Uh, we've had some larger scale clinics uh, uh, that have vaccinated several hundred people at a time, which have been successful. We plan more of those. Uh, and um, our patient groups of people are being notified uh, if you're over age 65 and given the opportunity to, to schedule the vaccine if you're within our primary care panels. One question comes up is why is Riverside giving vaccine to patients who are only have to be members of our primary care panels. And, and I, I think the reason for that is because we have to start somewhere. 
we have the names, we have the phone numbers, we have the age, we have the medical problems, we know who's eligible. So we're starting within our primary care panels right now, given the supply constraints. Other health systems that, that have medical groups have also been given vaccines. So if your primary care doctor is in another health system, you should contact them. Uh, and the health departments are distributing uh, some vaccine to larger private groups, private medical groups in the area. So right now we're starting with our own primary care patients and when you look at the total number of primary care patients that Riverside has in that 1B group, it's over 80,000. So we're working on, on that 80,000 first as, uh, as doing our part for the vaccine effort and we'll do whatever we can beyond that, particularly for the essential workers. Uh, we have developed a really um, excellent working relationship with the cities and town leaders. Um, they clearly have the best interest of their people at heart and we want to work with them. Uh, we're all, we've also developed uh, a really good relationship, working relationship with the uh, district health department leadership, uh, the medical directors in particular, and we are working with them as they receive the vaccine, vaccine so they know what our capabilities are for a given week to give the vaccine. So each week as, as we go forward, I'll describe to you what our efforts were and how successful they were and talk about the numbers uh, in terms of what we've received and how much vaccine we've given out. And again, our goal is to get every vaccine out within a week um, by the time we receive it within that first week. Um, it is a, a dynamic situation and there's a lot of fluidity to it, particularly at the federal level. Uh, so the state right now is receiving approximately 105,000 uh, doses of vaccine uh, from the federal government and it's distributing it to the um, all different parts of the state based upon population. Eventually that may change in terms of more doses being available via the federal government as production ramps up, but it's a very fluid situation uh, and a lot will depend upon what happens at the federal government. But we are absolutely doing everything we can to make certain we get the vaccine out to patients as fast as possible in as convenient a way as possible. It's a very effective vaccine. It's 95% uh, effective and virtually 100% effective at preventing uh, serious disease and hospitalizations. And um, of the 17,000 doses or so that, 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 that we've received and the 95% of it that we've given out, we've had one or two reactions that were, were, were serious and those people did just fine. Uh, and so we've had really great safety results and it's a very effective vaccine. And so uh, we're doing our, our absolute best to get that to you as soon and as quickly as possible. Thank you very much.